Good evening, my dear friends, and welcome to Friday Evening Vespers and commiserations to dear sister Eleanor, who's not been very well today. So we send our dear sister lots of love and pray that uh, the rest will do with the power of good. And I noticed this evening we have Sister Sue logged in. And for those who've joined us but not logged in, and for Sister Nancy and Brother Brian, who may be with us, welcome. So we begin our Friday evening, excuse me, by lighting a candle. And this evening I want to offer our prayers for Sister Elaine's mom, who's known as Mary, who's been unwell and who's struggling with some physical problems and awaiting um, a hospital consultation and it seems to be taking forever and a day so I want to dedicate evening prayers this evening for dear sister Elaine's mom Mary. We light this light in thanksgiving to almighty God for the Teo community of interfaith Franciscans who despite many knocks and trials along the way we are a united loving family who really do care for one another and we give thanks to St. Francis and St. Clair for their support and of course from the Lord Jesus. So join us now for the evening prologue of our brother and sister Racines of Mount Sinai and you may wish to say it after me. We enter the eternal and infinite garden <clears throat> with reverence to the heavenly Father, Mother, God, the earthly mother and all the great masters and reverence to the holy, pure and saving teaching and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. Friday evening, we commune with the heavenly Father, Mother God, saying the heavenly Father, Mother God and I are one. This communion in time brings union with the eternal and boundless cosmic ocean of all superior radiations from all planets as cosmic consciousness is awakened and the individual is finally united with the supreme power, God himself. So we give thanks. We give thanks this evening for all the blessings of today. And now I invite you to join me in just a brief moment of stillness where we take a nice deep breath. We may have had a busy day. I know I have, ducking and diving the showers in the garden, trying to tidy things up and prepare for winter. But it's been a lovely day being able to get out without those heavy winds and that incessant rain, because we've had periods today where the sun was shining and it does lift one's spirit. Let our evening prayer, our time together, be a time of soul rejoicing as we come into the presence of God, a God who loves us, and of course, a God who's calling each one of us to prayer and to hold the children of the world, of all faiths and none, who are wounded, who are hurting at this hour. So let us be still and just come to our heart. Rejoice is a favorite word of the psalmist. David's unceasing troubles could never dim his joy in God. Over and over he cries out, Rejoice, sing, shout for joy. Mercy is another favorite word. It occurs hundreds of times. David often spoke of the justice, righteousness, and wrath of God, but God's mercy was the thing in which he gloried. In Psalm 51, David acknowledges his sin, which is probably the aftermath of his sin with Bathsheba. He pours out his soul to God in a prayer for mercy and grace. He had such a deep sense of his sin that he was continually thinking of it with sorrow and shame. He writes, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. 
For I acknowledge my faults, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, and you only, have I sinned, and done this evil in your sight. You are just when you pass sentence on me, blameless when you give judgment. Further on, he writes, Yet since you love sincerity of heart, teach me the secrets of wisdom. Purify me with hyssop until I am clean. Wash me until I am whiter than snow. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your spirit. David now saw more than ever what an unclean heart he had, and sadly laments it. But he sees it is not in his own power to amend it, and therefore begs that God would create in him a clean heart. He knew he had by his sin grieved the Holy Spirit, and provoked him to withdraw. He dreads this more than anything. He prays. I am ready to fall either into sin or into despair, therefore uphold me with thy spirit. He had a broken and contrite heart, and sorrow for his sin. It is a heart that is tender, and God is graciously pleased to accept this. He places his confidence in the mercy of God. He is a sinner, but he loves God with all his heart, and he knows that God loves him despite his sin. The greatest sin of all must be despair. Like David, we must always place all our hope and trust in the merciful love of God.
And now we come to our first reading for this Friday evening. And the reading comes from Meditations Now, and it's a reading for November the 20th. I led them with cords of compassion with the bands of love. Should God speak to us through Jose today, it might go like this. How profoundly I love my children whom I have created. I continue to reveal to them my compassion. I help to bear their burdens and accompany them through the adversities that afflict them. I heal many of their sicknesses and demonstrate my loving concern in the midst of their deep sorrows and excruciating sufferings. I hold out to them my salvation and invite them to partake of my saving and redeeming grace. Yet they turn from me to pursue their own objectives. They expend their energy upon the fleeting things about them even those who honor me with their lips persist in investing their lives in the foolishness of their world. What more can I do for my beloved children than I am already doing? It is even as I love them and because I love them that I must allow them to go their own way, to satisfy their desires upon the husks of their temporary existence, to fill their emptiness with things that rust and decay and that will pass away. When they refuse to follow me, I will follow them, even into the dark, cold caves of nothingness or the pits of their despair, seeking always to draw them back to my redeeming love, to restore them to my will for their lives. How much I love my children, whom I have created. Return you who have strayed from God's blessed will for your life. Return to that one who created you, who loves you, and who patiently waits for you to come back to him. And so it is, my loving God, that I return day by day to your will and purposes for my life. Forgive me for so often straying off the narrow, well-beaten paths. Continue, gracious Father, Mother God, to draw me and hold me close to your loving heart. Amen. That is a beautiful reading, and you can really sense the presence of a loving Father, Mother God, calling their children home to peace. And yet, when we look around us in our world today, we know that those who inflict pain, like ISIS, the religious fundamentalist group in Syria, who has inflicted so much pain on innocent young people, like in Paris last weekend. They are not of God. They say they do what they do for Allah. But in the Holy Quran, there is nothing about seeking vengeance of that kind and blowing up people. How misguided they are. And yet, even in the churches, even in other religions, you have those who are so full of the dogma and the legalistic values that their heart becomes corroded to love. They give a lip service to God and whose hearts are closed. And I found that for myself as a young nursing monk, many of the older monks, anything for a quiet life. But tonight, you and I are called by a loving God to surrender our heart to love, to breathe in that love. And interestingly, our second reading 
is from Jesus Calling for the 20th of November. I am pleased with you, my child. Allow yourself to become fully aware of my presence. Allow yourself to become fully aware of my pleasure shining upon you. You don't have to perform well in order to receive my love. In fact, a performance focus will pull you away from me towards some sort of Pharisaism. This can be a subtle form of idolatry, worshiping your own good works. It can also be a source of deep discouragement when your works don't measure up to your expectations. Shift your focus from your performance to my radiant presence, said Jesus. The light of my love shines on you continually, regardless of your feelings or behavior. Your responsibility is to be receptive to this unconditional love. Thankfulness and trust are your primary receptors. Thank me for everything, trust in me at all times. These simple disciplines will keep you open to my loving presence. And these are the words from the mouth of Christ. For those of us who are willing to surrender our hearts, and to walk in faith, in trust, and to discern what is God's purpose for my life tonight. Well, my purpose is to be of service. What is yours? You will only know the answer when you make time to be still in the presence of love. Be still now. Be still and allow the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, set you free. We have a spiritual reflection from the, for the soul from St. Teresa of Calcutta. Be faithful in small things, because it is in them that your strength lies. Being unwanted, unloved, uncared for, Forgotten by everybody, I think that is a much greater hunger, a much greater poverty than the person who has nothing to eat. Do not think that love, in order to be genuine, has to be extraordinary. What we need is to love without getting tired. Do not wait for leaders, do it alone, person to person. Each one of them is Jesus in disguise. Even the rich are hungry for love, for being cared for, for being wanted, for having someone to call their own. Every time you smile at someone is an action of love, a gift to that person, a beautiful thing. Good works are links that form a chain of love. I am a little pencil in the hand of a writing God who is sending a love letter to the world. I do not pray for success. I ask for faithfulness. I have found the paradox that if you love until it hurts, there can be no more heart, only more love. And now we have the Canticle of Mary, the Magnifica. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God who is my Saviour. He looks on his servant in her lowliness. Henceforth all ages will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. He puts forth his arm in strength and scatters the proud-hearted. 
He casts the mighty from their thrones, and he exalts the lowly. He fills the starving with good things and sends the rich away empty-handed. He protects Israel, his servant, remembering his mercy, the mercy promised to our fathers Abraham and his sons forever. Glory be to the Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus Christ, our teacher, to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And now, my dear friends, we come to our evening intercessions. If there is something troubling you this evening, name it, bless it, and release it to God in the mindset of gratitude. Father, Mother, God, Christ prayed that we be forgiven through his passion. As you accepted him, accept his prayer for all who are hurting right now. Father, Mother, God, into your hands I commend my spirit. Through his beloved disciple, Jesus gave Mary to be our mother. With her we pray to you for all her children of all faiths and none who are hurting this night in mind, body, and spirit. Responds, Father, Mother, God, into your hands, I commend my spirit. Jesus gave to us his beloved Mary of Magdala to be an inspiration for us in our periods of desolation and despair. We ask that she will intercede for us with your Son and comfort us until we are one with you in heaven. Responds, Father, Mother, God, into your hands I commend my spirit. Father, Mother, God, heed the anguish of those who cry out to you with your Son. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Help us to hear the cry I thirst. Help us to see your Son even in the least of his brothers and sisters. Responds, Father, Mother, God, into your hands I commend my spirit. To the man dying with him, Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say unto you, This day you will be with me in paradise. Father, Mother, God, let these words be heard again by those who die tonight. Response, Father, Mother, God, into your hands I commend my spirit. And this evening, at the beginning of prayer, we offered our evening prayer tonight for one of our community, Sister Elaine, for her mom, who's known as Mary Sinnott. We pray for Mary this evening, and we pray that God will answer much prayer, that her mom's appointment that has been requested by her own doctor, that the hospital consultant will now see to Mary and offer her some respite from many, many months of suffering. We give thanks to you, O God, for hearing our prayers this evening. We pray this evening for dear sister Eleanor, who's unwell and who couldn't lead Vespers for us. We pray that Eleanor will feel a lot better. And we pray for Elizabeth, who's taking care of her. We pray for all our brothers and sisters around the world past and present and we remember dear brother Harry and his friend who recently drowned in the swollen rivers in the UK. We pray that Harry will be comforted by our prayer. We pray this evening for those who have no hope, who've lost hope, for those who've given up on their faith. We pray that they will be able to listen to their heart and hear that inner voice call them home to love. We pray for our brothers and sisters around the world who have given their lives to God for unity and peace. We remember Brother Paul and the Order of Franciscan Hermits, especially Brother Hadi and his aunt, for Brother Mark in Iraq, and we remember Brother Bjorn, who recently had an injury to his ankle and foot. 
We pray for all those who pray for us, for the many who have asked our prayer, and I pray for dear Maggie, who will be burying her husband, Bill, whom we've been praying for of late, who died last week in the hospice. And Maggie called to see me this morning to show me the beautiful pictures that they will be displaying at his special ceremony on Monday when his body is committed. So we give thanks to God for all the prayers that have been offered for Bill, and he's now at peace with God. But we remember our brothers and sisters in Paris recovering from the awful tragedy there last week and for our brothers and sisters in Russia who are still mourning the loss of loved ones from that awful air disaster over Sinai. Let us for a moment just listen to our heart and connect with the angelic realm and Mother Mary and send love, light, and blessing out into the world as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Mother God, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give to us tonight our daily bread. Forgive us our trespass, our foibles, our mistakes, Forgive us for our lack of charity and love, our impetuosity in the times when we've procrastinated. Help us to forgive those who have wronged us and to forgive ourselves for harboring grudges. Protect us from the forces of evil, negativity and despair. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And our closing prayer is from the little book of prayers from my owner in Scotland. There we go. Grant to me, O Trinity of Grace, from whom all life really flows, that no tie over strict, no tie over dear, may be between myself and this world, as it was, as it is, as it shall be forevermore, with the web, with the flow, O Trinity of Grace. So now we conclude with our Celtic blessing, the blessing of heaven, the blessing of earth, the blessing of sea and sky, on those we love this night, and on every human family, the gift of heaven, the gift of earth, the gift of sea and sky, the gifts of brother sun and sister moon and the animal kingdom. Be in your heart this night and every night. Amen. As I blow out this light, I ask the Lord Christ, our brother, our teacher, our mentor, the Son of God, to touch each one of you and fill you with the peace and the love and the joy of being in love by God. Amen. So namaste, shalom, inshallah, paxet bona mum shanti, solo di caritas, salam alaikum, and may the peace of your God, Goddess, reawaken in your heart the I am presence of God. Thank you for being here. And I look forward to your company tomorrow morning as I lead Saturday morning prayer. So thank you again. Have a safe evening. God bless.